Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to set up a custom NFT minting interface for the contract that we deployed in the previous video. So by this point, we've already uploaded our NFT assets and metadata to IPFS using ArtKit. And then we've deployed a custom contract using Studio 721 uh, using the contract tool. And then uh, we deployed that on Rinkaby. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this contract address. We also verified our contract. We can tell because it's got this little green check mark on Etherscan, on Rinkopy Etherscan, and it says contract source code verified. So going back to um, Studio 721, let me create minting UI. You can connect to the network that your contract is on, in my case, Rinkopy and then paste your contract in the box. This will go ahead and load the uh, ABI, the application binary interface, from Etherscan. So this only works if you have verified your contract on the same network on Etherscan. And then you get this minting interface. And all of the information, the configuration for your minting interface is again stored in your URL just like for the contract tool. The URL also stores your wallet address. So if you open up this URL again, you'll see the edit button and you can make changes. Um, and then when you're all done, when you're happy with your URL, you can copy it and send it to your collectors, or you can use something like Bitly, any other kind of URL shortening service and make a shorter version because the URLs are pretty long. Um, but if I load this up in an incognito tab where I'm not connected to my wallet, then we'll see there's no edit button. Um, it just you know, asks if I want to connect my wallet and then mint. So um, there are a couple things I can configure. If I hit edit, I can set the name. And I recommend doing this anyway, um, even if the name loads more or less correctly, because that will make it so um, the data doesn't need to be fetched from the blockchain, so it loads faster. So my beautiful, colorful shapes. And then I can set a background color for my page. Maybe I'll go with red and a card color. The text color and other things sort of adjust automatically for convenience. And then I can choose a cover asset. So image, video, or web page. So in this case, I'm going to go with web page because my NFT is an interactive web page. And then I'm going to go and grab my um, web page URL, which is here in assets. Grab this, stick it in here. And then I'm going to say ID equals four. So I get the um, red one. And then I want it to be um, 600 by 300. So when I hit confirm, now I have my beautifully configured minting website. And again, if I were to copy this URL and share it with someone, they would see the version that I've configured. Now, let me go ahead and try minting. So I'll click mint here and we can see it opens up my wallet. I'm on Rinkaby, so I'll go ahead and do this. And then when it's all done, you'll see the success screen and you can see the um, NFT has loaded. I added this note about how it can take a while for uh, NFTs to be indexed by OpenSea. And so you might see nothing or a placeholder for you know even several hours. And collectors often sort of get nervous. So I added this to hopefully um, let people know that might happen. So as with everything else, definitely test on a test network to know if um, your contract will work like the way you want it to. Some of the features that you can do in the contract builder just don't really make sense in a generic one size fits all, you know, automatic interface like this. So I haven't bothered supporting them. Um, but the common stuff like um, multi minting is supported. Let me show a couple of the other less common options now. So if we go into edit, we can actually change the um, function that's used to fetch the price or the remaining supply. So these things can configure how this mining interface connects to your smart contract.
This is useful if you want to um, use a contract that you didn't create with the Studio 721 contract tool, because it might have different names for some of the functions, or it might not have a sale is active. Also, um, this sale started right away because I enabled the option minting starts active right in my uh, contract. But let me show what, would it, what it would look like if we didn't have that option. So our, in, our minting interface wouldn't show the mint button like this. Let me go ahead and actually disable the sale. So go into write contract here and connect my wallet. And then under set sale is active, I'm going to say false. So I'm going to disable the sale. You can actually do this at any time with the Studio 721 contracts. I left it like that because um, every once in a while you'll have deployed things incorrectly, but you won't realize until after a few NFTs have been minted. But it's better to stop your sale um, when you notice that something is wrong rather than let it run to completion. So you can always stop your sale. Um, but anyway, going back to the minting UI now, let me hit refresh here. And now we can see that the sale is not started. So again, um, if you didn't initialize the contract with the sale active, you'll just need to put true in that box on either scan and then wait for your transaction to happen. Usually this takes, again, like 30 seconds to a minute. So happens reasonably quickly. And you will need to do this when you want to start your sale for real. So if you tell people that your sale starts at, you know, 4 p.m. on Friday, you'll at 3.59 want to start this transaction so that it goes through by four. You may also want to increase the gas that you give it. Um, well, it's too late here, but there's an option to set more gas and that will make sure that your transaction happens sort of in a timely manner. Anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to cover for the minting interface. So now you've seen how we can use Studio 721 to uh, create our artwork to deploy a contract, and then to create a uh, custom mending interface that we can share with collectors. I hope you enjoyed this video series and go on to create amazing art. I'm always happy to see what you've made um, and hear feedback about the tool, so feel free to uh, tweet at me on Twitter at D-V-N-A-B-B-O-T-T. -T. Bye.